How you doing there folks? Baders here with another video for you all. Now if you're like me and you've wanted to get your clammy man mittens on some nuclear armaments, well then buckle up boyos because today you're in for a real treat. We're going to look at everything from how to access nukes in Fallout 76 to how to launch them at people who probably don't deserve it. Does Gary the Ghoul deserve to get a lethal dose of explosion to his face? No, probably not. But did that bus driver deserve to get hit in the face with my penis? Also, no. Nuking isn't about right and wrong. It's about the way it makes you feel, just like hitting strangers with your penis. Now, remember, if you like this video, to hit that like button. I mean, hit it uncontrollably. Hit it so hard that the internet might actually hit you back. Now, go ahead and open your eyes unnaturally wide, and let's get to average baiting, baby! Now the first thing you want to remember when you're about to become a nuclear dictator is that no squabble is too petty to blow up someone's whole situation. Once you've got your dangerous socks on and you're ready to get your nuke on, you'll first have to join the Enclave. Because the Enclave are the only group evil enough to fire off more nukes in a nuclear apocalypse. Remember that shit that blew up the whole world? Yeah, I'm thinking we need more of that. Great idea, Kyle. Great idea. Go ahead and get my baby hitting gloves and uh, we'll turn this shit up a notch. <laughs> yes! God, we're evil. Well, in order to join the Enclave, you're gonna have to jiggle your giblets over to this abandoned waste dump and bitch slap some death claws. Search the cave and you'll find a super dead guy with a holotape that'll start the mission Bunker Buster. Complete the tits out of that mission and you'll be sent to the White Springs Bunker to become part of the Enclave. However, you won't be able to launch a Nuka Rooney right off the hop because you're new and nobody, not even the Enclave, trusts the new guy with nuclear missiles. Needless to say, you're gonna have to rank up in the Enclave. You'll need to prove your merit, so to speak. Show everyone how big your tits are, you feel me, big nuts? Now, you'll rank up in the Enclave by doing a number of different missions. Now, most of the missions are pretty basic. You know, your typical evil smash and grab, other times a little smash and smash. Just dig in deep and really contribute to the overall human depravity that is Fallout 76 post-apocalyptic wasteland. And boom, you'll fit right in. Get that immoral fuck on, so to speak. Now, once you've finished the few missions, then Modus, the robot with the face of a pervert, will give you a chance to become an Enclave General. Because he's a robot, and he just loves giving out promotions like their teenage tears at a boy band concert. Because he's lonely, and he doesn't have shit else to do. Now, Modi here's got some prerequisites to becoming a general, though. Don't you, Modi? Don't mind if I call you Modi, do you, bud? Of course you don't, because you're fucking imaginary. <laughs> I'll call you whatever the fuck I want. You'll actually have to acquire 10 accommodations, which can be acquired one of three ways or in a combination of the trio. You can kill 10 Scorch Beasts, 10 Legendary Enemies, or you can do 10 Enclave Events. Killing 10 Scorch Beasts is probably the most difficult and time-consuming of the three, because let's face it, Scorch Beasts, they don't like to be killed. No, they're giant slippery bat fucks who fly around and make it really difficult for you, so that's probably a last resort is what I'm saying. Whereas killing 10 legendary enemies is the easiest, especially if you find the right legendaries. Some legendaries are all talk though. I mean, all you gotta do is just grab them by the nipples and throw them across the room all willy nilly, just like I did to that mean kid who poked a hole in my water wings. Fuck that kid was an asshole. For instance, if you see a legendary Radstag just chillin', then you can just scissor kick him in the gonads and he'll go down like a sack of shit because he's a pussy, okay? <laughs> he's a fucking pussy, people, all right? Have you ever fist fought a rad stag? They fucking, they have no defense mechanisms whatsoever. They're just like rad stagging it up like, you know, and fucking pow, right to the ball sack. Boom, down like a dead elephant, you know? Now, if you can't find any easy legendaries and you're pressed for time, then you can do some Enclave events. These events are pretty easy to identify as they've got the word fucking Enclave in front of them, okay? Just look for that. They aren't that hard and there's usually a few of them on the map at any given time. Now, once you're done all the accommodations, you'll get the final rank of general. But once you're a general, it's not all about peace treaties and grabbing pussies, though. No, 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 no. In order to launch a nuke, you'll still have to work for it. The first thing you're going to have to do is collect a nuclear key card. This card is used to grant you access to the nuclear terminal in the nuclear launch silo. Key cards can only be used one time, and if you enter the wrong code, then you'll be walking home nucleus. So if you don't for sure know the code, then it might be a good idea to have a couple key cards on your person when you go in the silo. What some people would call backups. Yeah, 
backup key cards. It's a good idea. Now, to get a nuclear key card, you can actually use the terminal in the Enclave Armory to track one of these fuckers down. Once you know where that flying FedEx is going to be floating around, you just fast travel to it and shoot the ever-loving fuck out of it. Once it's destroyed, it will drop a crate that will require at least one bobby pin to open. Once you're inside, you'll find some supplies like water, some purple stuff, and ooh, some Sunny D. Oh, and uh, also the nuclear keycard, obviously, right? Why else would you be there? Now, once you have the keycard on your person, you'll still have to find out the code for any one of the three launch silos. There's Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie, each requiring a different code each week to launch a nuke from that specific silo. First thing you're going to want to do is track down the eight encrypted numbers from one of the silos. To do this, you can again use the Enclave Terminal to track down the codes on that specific silo. Go to where X marks the spot and you'll see a ghoul who clearly got separated from his group and he's just wandering around all lonely and shit wearing a nerdy as fuck backpack. Now just beat that loner ghoul to death and on his corpse you'll find one of eight encrypted pieces. Rinse and repeat for the remaining seven pieces. Now once you've got all eight pieces, you're still gonna have to decrypt the eight numbers to know their order in the code sequence. Now this is where shit gets really kerfuffled and confusing. I mean, it just gets really fucked up. Okay, so buckle up, all right? I'm, tr I'm gonna try not to lose you here. I mean, I tried to explain this decryption process to a little sweet old lady who was standing behind me at the DMV, and uh, she lost consciousness and started convulsing. I don't think it was related, though, although it might have been. It might have been. She just kept screaming, it doesn't make sense! I don't know. If it's probably not related. It's probably not related. Now, the easiest way to explain the decryption process is to think of it in three parts. The first part, you have the eight code pieces with the eight corresponding letters. In this case, the eight letters and numbers are RAC, FJ, NTW, and 66356023, respectively. Obviously, these are the numbers that you get from the ghouls with the little backpacks. Okay, you with me so far? All right, awesome. The second thing you're going to need is a decryption word, which is hinted at in the silo prompt in the Enclave Armory, which is this thingy, okay? There's three boards on the wall that slowly reveal pieces of the code word over the course of the week. Once you have the code word, you're good to go, okay? The key word is a word that's used to decrypt the code, but does not consist usually of the letters in the code pieces. It might have some of the letters, but it's not made up of the code piece letters. Does that make sense? You with me? All right, here we go. <laughs> My hands are shaking. Now, the decryption word we're going to use for this example will be whiteboard. Now, once you have the decryption word, remove all the letters in that word from the alphabet, which will give you something that looks like this. CFG, JKLMN, PQ, UV, XYZ, right? You with me? You cool? Everything's copo? Notice it's the alphabet but without the letters in the word whiteboard. This is where that old lady started getting glossy eyes. So you guys are doing great. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the word whiteboard and put it before the remaining letters in the alphabet so that it looks like this. Then you're gonna wanna place the actual alphabet below the new decryption alphabet like this. Now you have yourself an alphabetic decryption. Now you're gonna wanna take the letters from the corresponding code pieces from the key cards that you found and find them in the coded alphabet. Then you're gonna switch them out for the corresponding alphabetical letters. For instance, A is the eighth letter in the coded alphabet. So it becomes H, which is the eighth letter in the normal alphabet. C is the 12th letter, so it becomes L. This becomes very simple when you place the two alphabets vertically on top of one another, as you can see. Once the letters are switched out, you're gonna have yourself a new set of letters. These new letters are still scrambled, just in case you thought this shit was getting too easy, you'll still have to unscramble the letters to make a word to find the order of the numbers. Now sometimes there will be multiple words as an option, which is what we'd call a shitty situation. In this example though, the word when it's descrambled is halidomes. Halidomes will then become the order of the numbers. So all you need to do to get the correct code now is change back the letters with the corresponding coded numbers. Now, if H is A and A is 6, then H becomes 6. If A is W and W is 3, then A becomes 3. This makes the actual decoded number 63362650. If that made your brain explode, don't worry, you're not alone. It's harder to explain than it is to do, trust me. All you gotta do is look down here at this 
and you'll see what I mean. As you can see, the old letters correspond to the new decrypted letters, and all you do is switch them out for their numbers. So again, if H is A and A is 6, then H becomes 6. If A is W and W is 3, then A becomes 3. Does that make sense? With me so far? All right, awesome. So that's how we get the order. So we're actually going to get the order from Halley Domes when it's decrypted back into the old numbers that were associated with the key cards originally. Wow. All right. I got a little system here that's going to make it real easy for you guys. Just remember, keyword, new alphabet, decode, descramble, recode. Boom. Simple as that, okay? Which still sounds sort of confusing as tits. But that's as simple as I can make it for you, guys and girls, okay? Simple as I can make it for you. Now, I found this example on Reddit by a poster named Sock Puppet, and I'm going to put a link in the description in case you want to check it out yourselves. I think Sock Puppet did a really good job breaking it all down and keeping it very simple, so definitely check that out. Also, there's actually a subreddit that posts the codes each and every week for each one of the silos, just in case you want to take a little bit of a shortcut on the decryption process. Could be a good idea to just check it out. There's also websites dedicated to giving you the new codes every single week for each one of the silos as well, so you can also check out one of those websites. For me, though, I just like I just relish the challenge, you know? I just relish the challenge of breaking it myself. I'm just kidding. I always use Reddit, or, or someone tells me the codes. I've never broken this code myself. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Let's move on to the next thing. Now, once you've decrypted the code and you've got the key card and you know the location of the silo, the next thing you'll need to do is actually get the terminal to launch the fucking nuke, which can be easier said than done. Once you get to the silo, it's going to be protected by the world's most annoying robots, whose only mission is to stop you from having a good nuke time, okay? First things first. You're going to have to scan your body and find a DNA pass card, okay? Once you're scanned, you're going to go to the terminal to register the card. Once the card is registered, you'll be able to pass through the first set of laser beams, all the while beating the shit out of anything robotic. Next, you'll have to repair the power by finding and repairing all the broken valves. Make sure to check all the corners as some of these little bitches are tucked away all secretive-like. Now, once you pass the power, you're going to need to start breaking shit. So anytime you see something with a mainframe in it, smack the shit out of it, okay? That's just a good rule of thumb. Just smack the shit out of it. This will disable the laser grids that are stopping you from getting to the next location. Now, once you get past all those laser grids, then you're going to come across the power door that needs a terminal to open it. And the mainframe cores powering the terminal are damaged, so they're going to need to be repaired or replaced. You can take the mainframe cores out and repair them at the Tinker or Workbench in the next room, or you can have a look around as some undamaged cores are just lying all over the place all willy-nilly, which is kind of what I like to do because I don't like to build shit. Now, once you have all 15 pieces replaced or repaired, you'll be able to open the door leading to the last area. The final area in the nuke silo is where you'll be able to activate the nuclear prep by using these little red robots. In order to activate these guys, you'll have to use the terminal at the top of this like platform thingy to initiate the launch sequence. However, all the other robots hate the fuck out of these little red guys, so you'll have to protect them while they work. If one of them is destroyed, just go to the pod where they came from and replace them, okay? Don't get attached to the red guys, okay? And they're, they're not, it's hard not to get attached, but don't name them, you know? Don't name them because they might die. All right. They don't defend themselves at all. They have no defense mechanisms. So keep defending these red robots until the launch prep is complete. It's pretty simple, right? Now, once the launch prep is complete, all the robots will stop hate fucking the shit out of you. And you'll be able to go to the launch terminal, enter your card in the left side, and then enter the correct code in the keypad. Now, once you've gotten the correct code in, it'll light up green and you'll be able to go over to the launch goggles and just blow something the fuck up. Now, once you've done all that, there's just no time to nap. You'll be, you'll have to fast travel just outside the nuke zone and watch all your hard work come to fruition as you obliterate an oblivious rad stag just minding his own fucking business, okay? With his whole life situation ahead of him. You know what I mean? He's just minding his own business, getting his rad stag life together. You know what I mean? And your whole situation comes and blows his whole situation up for no other reason than you just wanted some good loots, okay? And you're eviler than shit. Ah, ha, ha. oh, that's hot. That's hot. All right, but that's how you do it, guys, from start to finish. And then you can you can farm the the nuked area and get all your goodies from there. But it's uh, it's quite the episode. It's quite the episode. Um, but enjoy, enjoy the nuclear apocalypse and contribute to it even more. You know. 
Now, once you've entered the correct key code, you'll be able to use that correct key code for the remainder of the week. But once the code's reset, you'll have to enter a new key code every single week for those silos. Every single time you want to launch a nuke, you're going to need a new key card every single time you launch a nuke. And every single time you launch a nuke, you're going to have to fight all those robots and go through the silo from start to finish. However, if you already know the codes, you won't have to go collecting them from the, guy, from the ghouls with the backpacks. Okay, so keep that in mind. You can cut out that whole step uh, once you've entered the correct code for that week. Thanks again for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to bitch slap that subscribe button like it's three weeks behind on your rent. <coughs> bitch! Where's the money, bitch? Where's the money? Where is it? Also, go ahead and hit that bell icon, too, because apparently YouTube thought there should be extra steps. Why not, right? I'd like to subscribe, but first I have to click this and this and do this. Oh, it needs an email. All right, and this. Okay, fuck. Just tell me when he's uploading. Fuck! Once you do all that, if you're lucky, at the stroke of midnight, a tiny little average baiter's fairy might come and tickle your butthole. Now, I hope to see you all again next time, and remember to keep on average baiting, baby.